Today I'd like to talk about how I handle assessment data. When we collect assessment data, it has to be usable. Why have assessments if you can't use it? In the past, I would have uh, PDFs, uh, you know, and I would make a copy, PDF, scan it, whatever, and have it on my computer. Uh, this is for the San Diego Quick Assessment um, of reading levels. And I'd have it on my computer and I'd make notes on it. And then when I would assess again, it's like, okay, I, now I have to compare it. And then I was taking the data and putting it into something else so I could actually compare the data and see growth and see what we needed to do. And it was very inefficient. So what I've done is I have digitized the assessment. So this is the San Diego Quick Assessment of Reading Levels, and I've digitized it. And it is in a Google Sheet. So if you have a Google account, you can use this in Google Sheets. If you're not familiar with Google Sheets, I'm going to try to walk you through the various parts of it. The sheets, think of a piece of paper, a pad of paper, and there are various sheets on it. And you can see the various sheets along the bottom. So what this sheet is entitled instructions, PDF, student reading list, summary. And then the summary I have in green. And then I have four tests here. And what I've done is I put the test in four times so you can record the assessment here in the Google Sheet and all that data gets transferred to the summary. Okay, then I can see what's happening. The instructions are here on this one. If you ever don't see the sheets, you can go to this uh, tab here. It lists all the sheets here, but there aren't that many on this one. You can, I think you can always see these. So the sheets are listed across the bottom. I have a link to a PDF of the San Diego Quick. Someone, some one had posted a PDF of it. I have it listed there. I do want to say that on this PDF, so if I come to this PDF and open it, it has the instructions for administration and for scoring. There is a typo here on this, and this is from the core uh, Pay a book and here it says conservatism, but on the student material it says conservation. I think this is the typo. I would just, if I was using this, I would white it out and put conservation on here. But this is the PDF. You can print out the PDF if you want to. It's here, the, it, the link is there. So I have the link to that. I have the explanation that there's that typo on the PDF. If you're testing online, what I do is I duplicate this uh, file. So I would come here and right click and hit duplicate. I can have it on twice. I can have it in separate screens, one that I would show my student and one that I would record on. I, you know, I have two screens. If you're in person, print it off, show it to them. Uh, but here, you can have it so that you can show the student material, student reading list here, nice and big here. You can show it to your student and the student can read from this and you can record on the duplicate, the other tab, uh, how the student answers. In any case, anytime I go to use this, I would make a copy for that student. So come up to the, come back here. So to see the uh, menu, you come here to this down arrow because you know we don't need to use all this real estate all the time. So if when you want to make a copy, use the down arrow and you can see the normal um, commands here, file, make a copy, and then name it. You know, this is Sally Smith SDQ summary, whatever and you're gonna make a copy of it for each student. And this is what you will record on. So this is now Sally Smith's. And 
you will go to the summary sheet and put in the student's name. So here on the summary sheet, you see down here, summary sheet. I'm going to put the student's name in here. This one is Sally Smith. And you might put in date of birth here. This name will transfer to each of the test pages. Okay, let's go back and look at the instructions. So once you've done that, you go to the first test to record the data for that test. And you can, uh, and you can link, it links right here, so it goes to that sheet if you want to. You can go to the cell G5, put in the current date and put in the uh, grade level. But I'm just gonna come to it here. I don't have to use that link. So grade, she is in, you know, third grade and today is whatever state it is. Okay, so as I'm uh, showing my student the, the printed version or the online version asking the student to read, I'm going to record their answers. Now, according to the instructions, you might start down a couple of grades from where the student is. Some of our students, you have to start right from the beginning. If we're finding that the student knows the beginning ones well, I just click one and then use this uh, do you see the square here? Do you see the dot on the right? If I put my cursor right on there, that's the copy and I'm gonna copy it all the way down to there. I got them all right. Sometimes with the first ones, it's easier to mark them right and then uncheck the ones that they miss, okay? And you can see it sums it up for you. So they, you can uncheck what they miss. If they, there's a column here so that if you want to make a note, if you want to say, you know, self-corrected or if you want to say uh, whatever, you know, sound by sound or, um, you know, read it slowly, whatever it is, you can make a note to that. Or if they misread it and they say this one was ran instead of run, I can put the miscue here for note to myself as to what was going on. So I can make a note here as to how they read it and go through column by column and check the ones that they got right or else mark them all right and check uncheck the ones that they did incorrectly. And I can make notes here and see how there's a section here for notes. I can make notes like it's really slowed down at grade level two or uh, missed a lot of the endings or was unsure of uh, short or long sounds, uh, vowel sounds, whatever it is. I can make notes in here and I can make notes on each word. Like, you know, I might say missed the ending or uh, left off the S or, I might just type in what they did read, like they type, they might have misread this one is right. Um, I have that column there for the miscues, so you can do that. So when you have this marked, sorry, I'm going to just mark a few. They did that, all correct. They did this one, all correct, except for this one and this one. They did this one, all correct except for, oh, actually that is this, you know, I would mark it as we're going there. The grade level is computed for you. So the independent, the instructional and the frustration, it is computed for you. So you don't have to figure out which was that, which was that. So you just go through mark right or wrong and this is computed for you, okay? You go through and do the whole thing. Now this test data is then transferred to the summary and it can see here's the independent instructional and frustration and here's their accuracy on the various levels and i find this helpful because something you know might be a frustration level uh you know maybe they had frustration level in fourth grade uh, and they got two right but the next time they're still at frustration level but they got seven right that tells me something so i like seeing it by grade level so once I'm done with a test here, I like to protect this sheet. So I don't accidentally change any of the data because it's easy as you're going through like, oh, gee, I just clicked that, you know? And it's easy to make a mistake of just accidentally clicking something when you don't mean to. So to protect it, you come down here, here's the test, it's been completed go to this little drop down menu here, go to protect sheet. And I can say whatever it is, I can put the date in, uh, or I can put in done, it doesn't really matter, but you're going to protect it. 
and I do set permissions and I show a warning. It's not that I don't want anyone to ever change it. I just don't want to change it uh, by accident. And this one here, when it says restrict who can edit this range, that's like if you have a shared document and you've created the document and you want people to just be able to input to certain cells so you can restrict who can what it, edit various ranges. But what we want, or what I like is to show a warning so I don't accidentally change a cell that on a page that I've already done. So you would do that. And so now if I go to try to change this, it's like, gives me a warning. Oh, do you really mean to change this? And I can cancel out or I can say, yes, I do mean to change it. Anyway, so, and you can see here that this one is completed. Uh, and if I put a date up here, let me just show you. If I put the date here, today's the 17th. But it doesn't matter whatever date you're going to give it. Oh, and see, it's a warning because I've already protected it. Yes, I do want to make that change. So there. But now that date is transferred here to the summary sheet, and we'll be able to see this here. So that's what I do for the San Diego Quick Assessment of Reading Levels. I also have uh, assessments for you know, the past, the core phonics, uh, Galaxy Ellis and a few others, but this is one I know a lot of people use, I'm getting it up right away. So I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if there's any assessment that you use a lot and this would be helpful, let me know that too, because I've got quite a few of these that I've made. And if I haven't made it, you know, maybe I will. But uh, I hope that's helpful to all of you. Thanks.